Let's talk about oil prices. Uh, down this week, but still holding above 80 bucks a barrel. Commodity watchers have been focused on weak Chinese data and what that will mean for global demand. At the same time, U.S. gas prices are still up 30 cents a gallon in the last month. Joining us now for more on energy is Amrita Sen, the Energy Aspects founder and director of research. Amrita, great to have you with us. Uh, what do you think the trajectory of, of crude is, is going to be? The Saudis have uh, you know, decided to extend their cuts. And when we saw them announce their cuts back in June, we have seen oil go up about 20 percent since then. So I would definitely deem it as a success from yeah. at least Prince Abdulaziz's point of view. But look, I think uh, what he has been saying throughout in OPEC Plus members is that they wanted to bring some stability to the market uh, to ensure that, you know, inventories don't keep building. And if anything, we have been expecting big stock draws in the market over the summer. And uh, the Saudi cuts and OPEC Plus cuts have definitely helped accelerate that. Um, we've also been through a huge period of destocking because of high interest rates, as we were probably one of the first to hire highlight this at the start of the year. And I think we are now, it does look like we are pretty much through that cycle. So I think oil will remain supported. There's a little bit of profit taking right now. It's also the summer lull, so people are off on holiday, uh, which is, again, to be expected. But I do expect prices to grind higher towards 90 after this round of profit taking is over. How do you view uh, China at this point and whether or not it's factored into the price? I was talking to another energy analyst uh, last week, and she said that the numbers out of China in terms of uh, buying crude have actually remained fairly stable considering the weak economic data that we're seeing. Yeah, I think there's a huge dichotomy between the oil numbers and the macro data out of China. And that's kind of been the confusing factor for the market this year. Because if you look at the macro numbers, and we've seen, you know, credit growth has slowed to less than 9 percent. There's a real risk that if uh, they didn't do the monetary easing and the interest rate cuts that we saw yesterday, that maybe growth would have been 4 percent for the year rather than 5 percent. But oil demand, extremely strong gasoline, jet, even diesel, um, the weakness has only really been in the the petrochemical sector, and that's because of the housing market. I think the fundamental problem is that the leisure activities and travel is back and back up beyond 2019 levels. There's even more easing of uh, travel restrictions. International jet should even pick up further. The problem is that people aren't spending money on the property market, which is why the macro data has been extremely weak. And again, that's because the government doesn't want to create the bubble. And that's really the only sector within oil that it's affected has been the petrochemical side and NAFTA and LPG. But we haven't seen that affect crude buying or just generally transportation fuel.